Welcome to the Simple Software Training University video number 104, Operator Training, How to Scan an Index with Simple Index. In this video, we will go over how the operator will scan, navigate, index, and save in Simple Index. This will give you instructions and tips for the best and most efficient ways to use Simple Index as a user. We're going to be showing several different configurations and jobs for how to run Simple Index. One will be a manual configuration to manually key in and index documents. It will pull from this folder. And another will be an invoice processing configuration that automatically extracts the information from the images. The first step is to open Simple Index. In this particular configuration, we have it set to automatically ask you to pick a configuration as soon as you open Simple Index. This is not done by default, so if you'd like to have this happen, you should ask the person that set up Simple Index to add this for you. We're going to start with the SIM 104 data entry configuration and click Open. This opens but does not start the configuration. You can tell which configuration is open. In the top left, it says SIM 104 data entry, which is the one we wanted to run. To actually run the job, you click the Run Job button. This will import the images from the folder or start your scanner and scan the images automatically. Now, it's brought up the first image that we want to run and we can manually key in the fields. I've set up five fields that allow for different types of indexing. The first is a text field and allows me to type whatever I want. I'm going to type the name in this particular field. Now I can tab down to the next field and this is the numbers field where I can type whatever numbers I would like. Let's type the account number in this field. The date field is a field where you can type the date in whatever format you want and it will automatically format it to a predefined template. So when I click off the field or tab off the field, it automatically formats the date. This allows you to not have to worry about what format the date's being typed in. So you could type whatever date you want and you'll know that it will automatically be formatted to this correct date. The template field is a field where you can only type certain types of characters. In this particular example, we can type three letters and three numbers. You'll notice that it shows red if I've typed incorrectly. So if there's too few digits or too many digits or the wrong type of value, it'll show up red and won't let you save until you fill that in. And then in the list field, we have a drop down that we can select from. You can either select a value, or you could also type into the field, and it'll autofill based on what you've typed so far alphabetically. So if I type a D, it pulls up the first record, but if I type an O, it fills in the next, which is document giant. In the list field, the person that set up your configuration can either allow you to type only the values that are in the list or whatever you want. Whenever you've typed in all the index information for a particular image, you can click the Save Index button to save that value to the image. We also have shortcut keys for all of our buttons that allow you to press a key on the keyboard instead of using your mouse to click that button. This can increase your efficiency and speed. That way you don't have to switch back and forth between the keyboard and mouse to index your documents. So the shortcut key for the Save Index button is either clicking it, obviously, or hitting the Enter key on your keyboard. Now you see that I've automatically moved on to the next image in the batch. The batch is a set of images that you're processing at one time. 
it's carried forward these values from the previous page. If I'd like to use those values again, I can just hit Save Index and it'll use those. Or I can change the values as I desire. Let's type the same values for this page again. And this time we'll type the date in a different format and we'll see that it still automatically converts it to the same date format. Now, we also have a grid view that allows you to better see what you've indexed so far and what's left to index. So if we go to the grid view, we see that we've indexed two out of the eight possible images that are in this batch. Now we can also tell that we're on the third of eight images by looking at the file navigator. This tells you that you're on file three of eight, so it's the third image out of eight total images in this particular batch, which again is the group of images that you're processing at the time. You'll see that since we haven't saved the index for this particular image, these fields have not been filled in. So we can fill that in now, again with the same information that we did last time. And then if we hit Save Index, it fills that value in. Now in these particular images, they're corresponding estimates for the invoice that are supporting documents. We want all of the corresponding estimates to have the same index fields as the previous document. Since we don't have a template for estimates, we can leave that field blank. Now this particular page is an automatic blank deletion page. This means that it's recognized this document as a blank and automatically deleted it. And obviously you can tell, first of all, that it says deleted on the image, or it shows up red in the grid view. Now if a particular document has been deleted and you don't want it to be deleted, you can use the mark unmark current image for deletion button. Now the image actually isn't deleted until the batch is complete, but any image with the deleted stamp will be deleted automatically. The shortcut for delete is shift delete. We also have a variety of other capabilities to manipulate and view the images. First of all, you can zoom in on particular areas. And as soon as you zoom in, you'll see that the mouse action has switched from the default zoom in to hand pan. This allows you to move the image around just like you would on any other image viewing software. If you want to put the image back to the original size, you can use the buttons up here. Page width makes it to the width of the image. Full page makes it to the height. Generally, page width is a good view as most of the information generally falls on the top of the document. You can also use the zoom buttons to zoom in and out as you'd like. We also have other options in the mouse action box such as annotate. Annotations are different sorts of stamps, sticky notes, and blocks that you can use to edit the image like you would if you were marking up a piece of paper that you were putting in a file cabinet. For example, a sticky note. We have a variety of other annotations that we won't go into right now. Now, if you've done a document or made some changes that you don't want, you can always undo those changes by clicking the undo. 
there's a button for that that undoes. Or you can click Control Z and that will do undo as well. We also have a crop capability where you can crop an image to a particular section. Now, it shows you a red box on the section that it's going to crop. And it automatically takes out all the rest of the image other than that section. If you'd like to create multiple crop sections for an image, you can definitely do that. Once the image is save indexed, it will apply the crop and split the image if there's more than one crop. We're going to undo the crop for now. You can also rotate the image if needed. Or there's an automatic rotate if you'd like. And that uses the text on the page to automatically orient the page to the proper position. So in this case, it automatically puts it in the right orientation. Most of the capabilities that are a part of the button structure at the top are also included on the right click menu. I can do full page. I can do page width. I can copy. Now the copy button is the same as this, which will allow you to duplicate a particular file. So the duplicate makes it so you can create two or more images that have different index criteria. That way if you have multiple pages that have different indexes, you can compensate for that. You can also rescan directly from the icons if a particular page wasn't scanned properly. We also have despeckle and deskew. Despeckle cleans up any noise that there might be on the page. Deskew straightens the page. Now, of course, on this particular page, it's very clear and straight, so that's not going to do anything in this particular example. The document navigator buttons allow you to move between the documents of the batch, but they don't actually save indexes. So if you use the document navigator, but you haven't saved your indexes, then it won't keep what you've done. So you have to make sure to click Save Index on any images before you use the document navigator to move around. Once you get to the last image of a batch and click enter or save index, it will say all files have been indexed, do you want to release this batch? This means that all the fields have been filled in, there's nothing been filled in incorrectly or missed based on the job settings, and then once yes is set or clicked, it will export the images to the output folder, to the database, and to the logging depending on what's set up in the configuration. We can check on the images in the output folder by opening them up in Windows Explorer or by going to the view menu and selecting output folder. Then we can see that the file name consists of the fields that we've entered if anything wasn't put in, such as the template, it's put missing, and that value can be changed as needed. So let's delete these out of the output folder since we're not going to be using these images for future reference. Now we have a second configuration that uses the same invoices that we've seen, plus some, of course. This one automatically recognizes information from the images automatically. So we're going to run this job in a more automated fashion so you can see how that works. I have it set up to use a shortcut 
to the configuration file that I've saved to the desktop. This configuration file is a shortcut that points to this particular configuration. So if I double click it, it'll automatically open Simple Index, select this particular configuration, run the configuration, and do any automatic processing that is part of the configuration itself. So let's double click this configuration. See that it opens and runs the configuration. Now it's automatically minimized this to the taskbar, but we can see the processing if we hover over the icon and it'll tell you the percentage. This allows you to do other work while the job's processing for large batches so you don't have to sit and wait for the job to be completed. Now you see in this configuration that once the batch has been run, it has the indexes filled in automatically, which is extracted from the page based on the setup. It's used zones, template, and list matching to find exactly what's needed. The grid view is very handy in automatic configurations because you can automatically see everything that's been recognized, not recognized, or automatically deleted. Just as in the original configuration, fields show up black. In this case, they show up black when they've been recognized as an appropriate value for the field. Now, if you want to make any changes to a particular document, you can go directly to the document and make any changes as needed. When you make a change, you click the Save Index or Enter button to automatically save the value change to the page. And we can see that it changes in the grid view. The red lines indicate deleted pages, which we can easily check to make sure that they're marked for deletion. Anything that's not recognized shows up blank. These particular pages, as we remember from the original, are grouped together with the invoice before it. We don't actually have to fill these in because it carries forward from the previous document. If we were to click Save Index on this document, it would actually fill it into the grid view. Now another method for this is to move through all the documents in the batch. Check anything that's blank to see if it's associated with the previous and fix anything that's needed, clicking Save Index afterwards. Then, once you've checked to make sure everything is correct, instead of hitting Save Index on every image, you click Save All. This is like hitting Save Index on all the documents in the batch very quickly without having to actually hit it as many times as there are images. So when I hit Save All, first of all, it makes sure that you actually want to use the Save All. When you hit Yes, you see that it automatically fills into the grid view and then gives you your standard message of all files have been indexed, would you like to release the batch? When I hit yes, the images are saved. And again, we can check the output folder in the same way. And in this particular configuration, it's used two of the values as subfolders and then put two of the values as a part of the image name. I'm going to delete these since we're not going to use these for future references either. If you ever delete images from the output folder, they are gone unless you recover them from the recycle bin. So keep that in mind. That's the end of the Simple Software Training University video number 104, Operator Training, How to Scan an Index with Simple Index. We've seen how to run any scanning or importing configuration with Simple Index and how to navigate and index those images to their final des destination once they've been processed.